Hello and welcome to Simply Linux where today I am going to be looking at your booting windows with the Linux. As you can see I have here Windows 7 booted. Um, it's just plain old Windows 7 and uh, everything seems to be running as normal as it can be. Yeah I'll put my own wallpaper behind there but meh. You know. Anyway to do this we want to grab an ISO I guess so nope not that one let me close that just for a minute because I think I've noticed that under optical yeah, I've got my open box one here that will do nicely okay so what we need to do now is reboot and I nearly right clicked this screen so let's reboot and see what happens here. I uh, tried this already with an ISO but I thought yeah I'll just do it again. So I'm not even going to bother going to the live CD. We'll go straight to the install. Uh, so I think that might be a better idea. Okay so it just boots me to an install or to a black screen we will soon see. If so I'll have to just go into safe mode, restart it, go into safe mode, it'll be fine. It's all good. Because uh, the VM, which I will show you here, why that's doing its thing, is actually set up for Windows 7, including Windows and whatever, blah blah. So, yeah. I don't know, I gave it 2 gig of RAM. And yeah, I can see in that little previous screen that the egg server has gone down, so. Not a real problem. I'll just restart the machine. Reset. Are you sure I should do that reset message? But never mind. So I'll reset it and I'll do it through safe mode. No problem. So I've got the safe mode visa. It'll do. Uh, using virtual box isn't the same as real metal. A lot of people don't know because it uses the CPU like straight through and so on. But no, it's nothing like. <laughs> so we'll just wait for this to boot into. But it's going to act some wide keyboard layout, no doubt. Yeah, there we go. And I'm a Brit. So let's have some UK goodness. Okay, I'll do screen and we'll just start to install from there. Let me minimize that a bit. Okay, next. Now searching the drives, there are two drives on this machine because um, it was already a Win 7 install from long ago and I thought well I'll just add another hard drive to the virtual machine a virtual hard drive that is and as you can see it's saying shall I do this I'm going to say no I want it on the 18 one as you can see there's two partitions there I can erase that and use the entire disk which is what I'm going to do ok all drives on SDB are going to erase whoopee do let's do that ok it's computing its size and it's going to say everything's going to be wiped yes I know you just told me and off it goes So I hope you've had a good uh, week so far. I know over at the pond there, you extended uh, holiday, extended weekend I should say, and it's only Saturday now, so you got some down Monday. Woohoo! Labor Day, I do believe. Yeah, and it's Saturday the 31st of August in the UK at 1334, which means, which means half the day's gone. Well, that's okay. Anyhow.
help. Uh, when I've done this last time, this is just a new ISO I've mocked up, actually, this open box one. Uh, just experimenting with some stuff, programs, etc. <coughs> when excuse me. Uh, I'm not sure whether I added the NVIDIA drivers or not on this, but I can soon find out later on. If not, they do need to be added for the final release. I did a test release, and another YouTuber, Subti Boss, he has a pretty stellar machine, and uh, he said, hey, sure, I'll try it for you. Now, apparently it works, so Ali is a happy man. So anyway, this is nearly installed and could be asking me for the uh, bootloader etc etc I am in a VM so I haven't gone EFI or anything like that this is legacy although it does do EFI as well ok let's start up initial program yep next and finish And just wait for a moment while it actually does do the boot load a bit. If you hear the creaking, it's just me moving because I need to reach over. Oh, I'll click finish there and I will reboot. Please press enter when the live CD is removed, which I have. And we have here uh, our choices of the PC Linux OS, the recovery mode of PC Linux OS, and Windows 7. So we'll boot into Windows 7 to make sure that hasn't been uh, in any way touched by the bootloader, and no, it hasn't. I could be clawed right now and just reboot it <laughs> but I won't, a hard reboot that was ok, let's restart I know the hard disk is still going in so let's reboot it anyway Excuse me. So, yeah, searching down Windows is taking longer than it to do Windows, which is rather strange. Just, just kill all. Kill all Windows. Kill all now. That'd be rather fun. Here we go. Get rid of my arrow key. Ok, let's boot into our freshly installed PC LAS. Booting the system. Ok. See, it's checking certain things. I'm not going to hit escape and all that. I'll just leave it showing the boot screen. Hey, there we go. Asking me where do I live? Well, I don't live in Chicago. I live in the UK, so let's go down a bit. GB, there you are. Next, yeah, I could do. Put in our passwords. And it's asking me for who I am. I'll just do it, that's fine. I sometimes put present here, in fact I will. I do not matter. <coughs> Let's 
Excuse me. And we're all lucky. As you can see, we are now dual booting. Okay, so we should be able to see stuff on the windows and oh hello, I'm showing hidden files. Uh, something I gotta fix on the uh, on the master copy if you like. Uh, tell it not to show bloody hidden files. Don't. So anyway, yep. As you can see, all that seems to be working pretty nice. Uh, this 34 gigabit volume here, gigabyte volume even. Here's the windows. Here's the windies. As you can see. I don't think I've got anything in that one now. So that's the Windows uh, for Win 7. So that's all working quite nicely. And that's basically it. Uh, if you're coming across from Windows and you do happen to come across this window manager called Openbox, you'll see things like, ooh, as a taskbar, Mike Windows, it has a clock at the end and speaker for speaker things and the internet and things and printer things you'll come over here and you'll think this is stubborn it's not as you can see it's a tint to settings config it is not a stubborn and neither is that or that or that which is the file manager or that which is a text editor as you can see or that see so we're going ooh what so I'll left click the screen and nothing comes nope Right click people, right click. <coughs> and that's where all your applications are. Audacious Brasario and all that. <coughs> software center, yep, we have a software center and it's uh, Windows Store on Acid. What do I mean by that? Well, Windows Store is, well, buggy and slow for a start, but asking me for my admin password and as you can see there's a quick introduction here the software and the system is all into packages the package menu enables you to install upgrade or remove software packages you should reload the package information regularly otherwise you can miss important security updates note changes are not applied instantly at first you have to mark all the changes then apply them so okay We'll close up and we'll do what it says. We will reload. This uh, is called Synaptic. Uh, Synaptic is normally used on Debian, Ubuntu and Debian Lock systems. But this is an RPM system. And it's still using the same package manager. Although slightly customised. And use a system called Apt for RPM. I will explain this. Because... You know, I'm not going into too deep into things. Anyway, let's mark all the things. And all we've got to upgrade off this is uh, Lipsix 4 BSD 0, which we'll mark. Now we'll apply and apply. And it's downloaded that file and it has installed it. That's it. That's all the updates it's got for today. If you notice at the bottom of Synaptic, we've got sections, status, custom filters, and search results. If we go to status, we can see all the packages which are in the right hand panel here. We can see the, all the installed packages, that's everything that's installed so far. Audacious and Bit1 and Blues and all that. Blues is for uh, Bluetooth, Compton for whatever. Yeah, Compton can actually go because uh, it's not actually needed here. We have. Uh, another so if you want to remove a package you can completely remove it which will take all its files with it so I do Compton Comp as well I'll click apply and are you sure yes I am and they're gone no longer there okay <coughs> you're coming over from a different system of course Windows a different and you don't know what to look for, so you're thinking to yourself, mm, I need a web browser. I don't like quite like the web browser that's been given me in a certain distro. I'll give you Brave, other people will give you Firefox, Chrome, 
Sally, say yes, Firefox. I'll call on Firefox. So, we we'll search for Firefox. So we can look at the description now for Firefox. We think stuff now. What are the web browsers are there? So let's try that one. So we search for a web browser. These have come up. Now not all these are going to be web browsers. Audio decoder certainly isn't a web browser. Brave is. Cyberfox is. Uh, Dillo is. Double is. Well, I haven't seen Double before. I'll have to have a look at that. Uh, E-Links is. Anthony is. Falcon is Firefox, of course. And then you've got all the stuff of Firefox. Language and so on. So we've got Google Chrome Stable and so on and so forth. You get Icecar, you, you get the idea. So we have uh, yeah, a few web browsers. So I think, okay, got that sorted. Music player. That's when I can spell music player. And we've got all the ISIS already installed, of course. But we can install Babe and Clementine and Dead Beef and so on. Uh, Google Play Desktop, where if you got music on Google Play Store, it will sync with that. Lollipop, sounds good. Lollipop is a new known playing information. Whoa. So, if I want to play with Lollipop, I could mark that for installation. Now, you've noticed it's going to say to be upgraded, it's going to be kids and a lot of Python stuff and Titan PL parser. We'll mark those, they're only going to be that small. So we'll click apply and apply. And if you notice, I haven't had to search the internet, I haven't had to open up a browser yet, or do anything of that ilk. All I'm doing is I've opened up my package manager, and they will work the same, pretty much the same way. Uh, we have repositories and so on uh, some distracts you have to add repositories to get some of the stuff that's our standard here so by the way if I go to sound you see it isn't there just because the menu hasn't updated in the traditional way and now you don't need to add stuff yourself but there's lollipop now Uh, window manages that differently to what we call uh, can always match your answer in yes or no. No, there's no artist to show because well, there's no artist to show. If you click about here and you get lollipop, a music player for now, music lollipop, blah blah. It reminds me of um, Peppermint's icon that does actually. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm just looking to see if I have a USB stick local. Let's see if I can get Lollipop to work. So I'm going to cancel that because that's actually off my own uh, machine here. So I need to come over here, right click and SanDisk. And then my VM should pick it up, which it has. Pretty confusingly it looks uh, great. So if I can drag that over no uh, okay new playlist okay now you kind of drag it over I've never used lollipop so mm. not at all okay we'll do this another way we will right click and we'll click it with lollipop and hopefully ah there we go playing a bit of music so yeah now you probably didn't hear that i've got the volume turned down quite low because of copyright strikes but me having fun through is me just having the mixing uh a virtual dj app which is actually a Windows app that I run on Linux. Anyway, that's me dual booting. Uh, hope you've enjoyed 
and if you hear that beeping that's one of my watches going off <coughs> I hope you've enjoyed this version of Simply Linux uh, how way to install a dual boot and uh, I didn't go through it detail by detail but I've just done it quickly just so there's no problem with it it's all good anyway you have a lovely day and I will see you soon and you like take care bye bye now